Hey, what's going on YouTube? Welcome back to yet another amazing video. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how you can optimize your NVIDIA graphics card for gaming in 2025. I hope this guide helps you out. So make sure to stick around till the end of this video. And with all that said, let's get started with the intro without wasting any more time. All right, first thing first, you have to head down to the first link in the description below and download the NVIDIA app or NVIDIA GeForce Experience, whichever works for you. And once you download that, you can simply look that up, NVIDIA app over here. And once it opens up, what you have to do is go down to the drivers section and make sure that you're always up to date with the latest drivers. If you guys cannot see, just simply right click on the check for update section and make sure that you always have the latest version of drivers available right over here now they have a few settings that you can tune in this part over here which is program and global settings but we're not going to be dropping into this one because it's very very simple what we are going to do is now heading over to microsoft store and you have to download nvidia control panel from here so just simply look up for nvidia control panel and simply install it on your pc you can click on open from here or you can right click on any empty area of your desktop head over to show more options and then you can open nvidia control panel from there but before moving ahead i want to take you guys to rec cloud which is an ai powered audio and video workshop tool for everyone this is best for content creation and you guys can go to the link in the description below to download it on your pc for free this application has very simple interface and you guys can see the amazing AI tools, which are speech to text, subtitling your video, text to speech and AI video translation. It has inbuilt screen recorder as well if you want to record your screen. Now for an example, I'm going to be using AI subtitles. Now here I have imported a file and we are going to select the source language that is English. As soon as I click on convert, it will start generating the subtitles on the screen. Once it generates that, you guys can see that it opens up a prompt like this where you can actually edit the subtitles over here. You can select the style. So let's just say that I am going to go for a subtitle that is like that and the text color should be black. To save this file, you can simply click on the save button over here. And if you want to export it, you can simply click on the export button and then name the output. So I'm going to be typing in subtitles. I'll just do desktop over here and then click on export. As you guys can see, now it is exporting. And once that is done, you can simply click on view files and it will open up. Hi everyone. And here is the final output. Of speech to text. You guys can see I have 208,000 subscribers and I'm really close to 210k subs. So I trust you guys subscribe to the channel and I hope you like this. It is an insanely powerful tool if you are a content creator, a beginner, or you want to narrate your stories in a better way. You can explore every feature over here by downloading this from the link in the description below. Once again, thank you RedCloud for sponsoring this video. And now let's move ahead. Any which ways, once you are over here, you will see a ton of settings. But you don't have to worry because I'm going to be going through every single one of them. Let's have the first one that is adjust image settings with preview and over here what you have to do is simply click on the second option that is use the advanced 3d image settings then click on take me there and you'll be in manage 3d settings that is the second option right over here now i'm just going to be zooming it so you guys can see everything very carefully we are going to be changing global settings today so let's start with the first one that is image scaling and you guys have to turn the thing off Ambient occlusion should also be turned off. Anisotropic filtering, you're gonna have to go with 2x. Anti aliasing, you have to turn off FXAA and gamma correction should be turned on. Anti aliasing mode should be application control. Anti aliasing transparency should be set to off. Background application max frame rate, you guys have to turn this thing to on and then make sure that they are running on 30 FPS. This will make sure that all of the applications which are not in focus mode will be running on reduced frames and it will help you to save your system's resources. CUDA GPU, you have to make sure to set this into all because you want to utilize your GPU to render it. CUDA SysMem fallback policy, what you have to do is set this thing to prefer no SysMem fallback. DSR factors should be turned off. Low latency mode, you guys can go with ultra, but I would also recommend you guys to keep it on, but ultra works best for me. Max frame rate, I have kept it off monitor technology 
I have gone with G-Sync compatible because I have a monitor that is compatible with that. But if you don't have it, which in most cases you won't, so you can set it to fixed refresh, doesn't really matter a lot. MFAA can turn off, open GL GDI compatibility go with auto, and the rendering GPU should be set to your native graphic card. Power management mode should be set to prefer maximum performance and this will disable all kind of power saving features related to your GPU and help you to consume more power and produce more performance. After that, preferred refresh rate should be set to highest available according to your monitor because this is the most important part which we are going to be covering up later. Shader cache size, I have gone with 10 GB because my graphic card allows that. For most of you, you guys can apply somewhere between 5 to 10 GB. That is the most optimal value over here. Texture filtering should be turned off. Texture filtering, negative LOD bias, clamp. Texture filtering quality, I have set this thing to quality, but you guys can go with performance as well. Texture filtering, trilinear optimization should be turned on. Threaded optimization, I have left it to auto, but you guys can turn this thing on, it's better while you're playing your games. Triple buffering should be turned off. Vertical sync should be set to use the 3D application settings. And then all kind of virtual reality should be set to off and one. Now you have to go to the third option that is configure surround physics. And over here you have to make sure that your graphic card is your processor, not your CPU. This is really important because it uses your integrated graphics to render your screens or your games. But you don't want that. You want your physical graphic card to do that for you. In the display settings, go to change resolution and don't choose anything in Ultra HD, HD or SD. Scroll a bit down and you'll find all of the PC settings over here and you'll be shown the best resolution available for your monitor that is connected to. For me, it's 1920 by 1080 at 240Hz refresh rate. You have to make sure that this refresh rate should be set to the maximum available. After that, apply the following settings. You have to click on use NVIDIA color settings and then make sure to set it to highest and output color depth should be, should be set to 10 BPC if that is available for your monitor. This will help you to improve the blacks and also help you to improve the visibility in the games. For the color output format, you can go with RGB and output dynamic range should be set to full. After that, click on apply. Once that is done, click on yes. Next, head down to adjust desktop color settings. And over here, you have to set your digital vibrance a little bit above than 50. That is the basic value. It will help you to saturate your colors a little bit more and help you to improve the visibility in the games. After that, you have to scroll all the way down until you find adjust desktop size and position. And over here, once again, just ensure that you are using the highest refresh rate available on more than one monitors if you have that on your PC. Next is adjust video color settings. And over here, if you have multiple monitors, what you have to do is click on with NVIDIA settings, head over to the advanced tab and make sure that it is set to full for all of the monitors that you have on your PC. Then go over to adjust video image settings and then you have to leave them to auto. Once that is done, you can simply close your NVIDIA control panel settings. Next step is optimizing your Windows settings to make sure that you're getting the optimal output. And for that, you can head over to settings on your PC and then go down to gaming. Head over to game mode and turn this thing on. It will help you to utilize your GPU and disable unnecessary services running in the background. After that, go down to graphics and then click on change default graphics over here. Enable hardware extracted GPU scheduling as well as optimizations for windowed games as this will help you to reduce your input latency, improve your performance and also help you to reduce your render latency in the games. Once that is done, what you have to do is head over to system and then go over to display settings. Scroll a bit down until you find advanced display and then click on that. Now make sure that choose a refresh rate. This thing should be set to the highest refresh rate available for your monitors. Do that for multiple monitors if you have it by selecting multiple monitors from here. And once that is done, close it. The next two steps are really important, so do not skip them. First one is creating a restore point. And for that, simply search for create a restore point over here and then select your local disk C. Click on create and name it NVIDIA just so you can remember it. I highly recommend you guys not to skip this step if you want to restore all of your settings back to normal without any kind of data loss. Once that is done, simply close it. Next, and one of the most important step over here is NVIDIA GPU optimization pack. Once you open up the NVIDIA GPU optimization pack, you'll find in four simple folders and I'm going to be going through each one of them. You can download it from the link in the description below or you guys can join my Discord server. Now let's open up the first folder that is CMD latency tweaks in which you'll find the first file that is a batch file that is latency tweaks.cmd. You can simply open it up in notepad to ensure what are you running on your PC. These three commands are BCD edits 
and what you can do to run them is right click and running them as administrator they will help you to reduce your input latency on your pc second one is nvidia gpu optimization and this is the most important part over here it will help you to reduce all kind of power saving features on your gpu and boost your performance to do them simply double click to run every single one of them and it will help you to correct the default values on your pc for your gpu for maximum performance i would recommend you guys to run all three of them third folder is the unwanted services in which i have left a ton of services that are running on your pc consistently once again you can disable them for extra performance and if you use any kind of bluetooth service or printer services do not disable these two but other than that i would recommend you guys to disable all other services over here and if that causes any kind of issues on your pc you can revert them back from this folder right over here last one is the programs folder in which i have left msi mode utility 3.0 you can right click in on this as administrator this is a very simple tool that you guys can see over here what you have to do is look for your graphic card in this list and then click on the msi button next to it and then for the interrupt priority set this thing to high and then click on apply this will help you to set up the correct interrupt priority and help your gpu to handle more interrupts and prioritize them and this will help you to optimize the performance and improve its frequency once that is done simply close it and close your fps pack and now you guys can drop into any game to see the performance before and after so that was it for this video guys i hope i could have helped you out if i could have make sure to leave a like and smash the subscribe button since it really helps me grow the channel we are really close to 210,000 subscribers and i believe in you guys we'll see you all in another amazing video until then stay tuned keep watching bear fox and peace out